guys, welcome to the Smosh Cast. Yes. Holy Woo. crap, this is so cool. I can't believe this is happening. Um, uh, I want to welcome my co-host Amanda Leancanto. It's me, Amanda Leancanto. I am very excited to be here with my other host, Shane Top. Hi, thank you, Amanda. It's great to be here. You're so welcome. And uh, I'm so stoked. Our first guest, Courtney Miller. <laughs> Courtney Miller's in the house. Hello, it is I, the Courtney Miller at this table. Um, we've got a great first episode for you. Uh, there's too much to talk about, um, as you probably know from these past few days. Uh, but we also want to talk about everything that's been going on since the last Smosh cast ended. Uh, we want to talk about our reactions to everything that's going on right now. I also have brought a bunch of fun stuff from Reddit that I want to go over. And uh, talk about um, some interesting people in the world that uh, inspire us maybe in the worst ways. Uh, we'll get to that later. But Exactly. I feel like we are just going to be talking to each other like we do in real life, where we tell stories and then we kind of like take them on as people and talk about who they are, how we feel about them. And just kind of razz each other. Just razz it. Just a little razz. wackadoodle time. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, um, the Smosh cast, I, I, I have been working on this for a while, and then Amanda and I have together have been working on it for a, a, a bit, and I, I want this to feel more like our conversations every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are constantly making each other laugh, we're constantly doing characters, we're constantly doing bits, you don't see it end up in all of our videos. Uh, I'd say out of every five characters that we joke around about and do, one of them makes it on to like try not to laugh. Yeah. And uh, some of my favorite shit that we do is just, it's just in the lunchroom. It's just when we're <laughs> hanging out. Lunch so, talk. So I want this to be that. Yes, this is the inside to our lunch chats. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Lunchtime with Smosh. We're bringing that back too. Uh, um, so, like, look, look, let's just get into it. Um, you know, the Smosh cast is back, but also Anthony's back, dude. What? Holy crap! Anthony is back, and I feel like I probably had a very, I had like an outsider interact, like um, experience when he came back because I never was on Smosh when he was here. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but I, my heart was so full at the thought of these two childhood friends buying back their company. Like, it's such an amazing story. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, you guys saw my reaction. Um, it was really trippy. It always like sat wrong it, or it never sat right with, hello, is that how it? Yes. Yeah, hello. It never sat right with me that Anthony just had to say goodbye to Smosh, this thing that he built with Ian. And when the announcement was crazy, they filmed it. I don't know what they're going to do with that footage. Yeah, because you like I don't know oh, if people have seen it because you are you told... are crying in it. Ugh. You are. <laughs> you, <laughs> you are. I was like weeping. I don't know where that part of me came from. I think that was a part of me that I said goodbye to a long time ago, <laughs> which was like the Smosh fan, Courtney. Your parents came back and they got back together. That's, that's basically what happened. That's literally dad that is, and dad. As a child of divorced parents, <laughs> that hits home. Uh, uh, but yeah, that was so cool, and it just felt so right to see them together. And like Ian is just glowing every day now that he's got to tell everybody, and that this is happening. That dude is amped right now. So excited. Uh, yeah. So to give to paint a little picture of what it was like inside, look. Um, we knew that some big news was happening, right? Mm -hmm. Like we all kind of got tipped up about it like weeks before. It was like, hey guys, something's big is, ha big is happening. We can't tell you. It's confidential, probably legally speaking, like buying a company, you can't just like tell anyone. Um, so we all get in there. We're all there. Ian standing in front of everyone. Well, first it was all of all of us, all the Smosh team, and then Rhett and Link and yes. company comes walking in. We're like, "What mm. is going on?" I don't think I've ever. I've only seen them in, like, come to visit us once before for their funeral. Yeah. Uh, if they're coming by, it's like this is serious. Yeah. Uh, they're the nicest guys, but because they own they owned Smosh, it had this like huge weight to it of like, holy shit. Also, Rhett is seven feet tall. So there's an added <laughs> presence there. I feel so at home with Rhett. Um, <laughs> how, how did, it's gotta feel weird to feel short 
Like It feels incredible. I've never <laughs> felt sexier in my life than when I stand next to a huge man. <laughs> or a huge woman. And yeah. I seek them out. They're very hard to find. <laughs> You're like those sucker fish on great white sharks. <laughs> yes, exactly. I like climb mountains to find these tall, tall folks. And I was standing next to Rhett, and I was just like, I just wanted to stand next to him for hours. <laughs> I feel okay. like a little woman right now. <laughs> um, uh, so they're there, and we're like, what the hell's going on? Then Ian kind of gets up. He has a walkie-talkie, <sighs> and he's like, uh, so in, in to simplify it, he kind of is talking to us now. He's about how, like, uh, well, Rhett and Link said some stuff first in their very Rhett and Link way, you know, just a very, like, like well, you know, it's been a jolly good time, <laughs> and, uh, you know... This this job in YouTube is a lot about friendships and about how they come and they go and all that stuff. And we're like, okay, man, are you about to fire us? Like, <laughs> what the hell? Anyways, what I'm saying is, you're fired. Get out of my house and take all your belongings on the train. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Um, so Ian's like, uh, Smosh has new owners. Like, Smosh has been bought, like, essentially. It's, it's kind of like, mm. I, I forget the exact wording, but then he's like, okay, are you guys ready? And we're like, yeah. And he he goes into the walkie-talkie and he goes, the eagle has landed. Into the hen house. Into the hen house. Yeah, which is not how that goes. Yeah. He goes, he goes <laughs> and never. And a, That's actually the whole worst thing. I news. think it's like, I think it's an old, like, lore. Like, smosh lore. Because Anthony was like, did you guys hear a hen house? I was like, yes. <laughs> what? I think it's something, it's like a thing between them. Whoa. Okay, someone comment if they know if that's a smosh No, I joke. think Ian just said a phrase wrong. I think that's he probably just vote. screwed it up. <laughs> oh. um, kind of like Lance Armstrong when he landed on the moon. <laughs> Equal caliber. <laughs> events mm -hmm. um, so he says the eagle has landed and we're all standing there and all of a sudden I see out the front door I see Anthony walking up mm -hmm. and I'm like I, I don't know if I, I processed any thought at that time he walks in walks next to Ian we're, I, I think we just like we all start cheering because it's Anthony. He yeah, was we're giddy. Because like, my my instant when he said the eagle had landed in the hen house or whatever he said, <laughs> I looked to you or someone. I think it was you next to me. No, it was Kimmy. And I was like, it's Anthony, isn't it? But I but when Anthony came in, people started cheering. I was like, oh, cool. Like, he's going to be in some videos probably. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Right. We've been, we've been talking for years about Anthony coming in for videos. But it's something that just seemed impossible. Right. For whatever reason. And I mean, I understood, like, I understood maybe it was Anthony, like, for his feelings about Defy. I, I don't know. I actually don't know. But uh, I'm sure they are going to cover it at some mm -hmm. point. But it just kind of became a joke of, like, he's never coming back. We're not going to have him on. It's been the better part of a decade. So he walks in. We're like, okay. And then they stand next to each other. And I think it was Anthony who goes, uh, we bought Smosh. They yeah. said, we bought Smosh back. Yeah. yeah, and and then it's just this eruption of cheers. I screamed. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know who. I literally, like, the excitement I felt for them, I, man, I guess I was dead inside, too, you know? <laughs> and this revived me, and it was just so cute seeing them. Yeah, it was the really parents cool. coming back. But my favorite part was... First of all, being a part of it, I just felt like so special. I felt like I was invited to like the legacy, like grandparents' home for Christmas. And I was like, <laughs> I'm the friend. Um, but my favorite part is when people were coming in late. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, that was insane. Can we talk about the late people <laughs> that walk? So the door is like. <laughs> <laughs> Announcements already happened. Like I'm already crying. They are talking about the details, and then just one by one, other people start keep coming in. Noah shows up, and he walks in, just like, "Hey, how's it going, guys? Sorry, I'm late." Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. Noah, we bought the company. Oh, what? <laughs> Noah, completely different hair. Yeah. Oh, for real? Sick. Congratulations, um, dude. Uh, and then Keith was shortly after, and then uh -huh. Keith was like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then Olivia was like, with, with her with phone, a coffee. with her coffee, with a smoothie. She was like, what's happening, you guys? <laughs> what's happening, you guys? 
She was like, oh, oh. And then just kept going on on a conversation. I like that she broke, like shattered the reality by walking straight up to Ian and Anthony who were like, it's like mid presentation of what's going on. And she's just like right there like, my car was low on gas and I know I have a coffee in my hand, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My car was low on gas. It's like, but you made three stops to somewhere <laughs> for drinks. It's so great. And then Jackie was last, I think. And Jackie, Jackie took one look at Anthony and was like, oh, whatever. Like, she just couldn't handle it at the moment. It was yeah. so funny. I don't think Jackie got it. No, because she was like, I think she thought Anthony said, we I'm from Smosh. Or I'm from Smosh. And she's like, we go back. We go way back. Yeah, she's like, we, go, we go way back. And then I was like, oh, girl did not get it. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, but to be fair, Nobody knew what this meeting was going to no. be about. We've had tons of these meetings. They're usually about nothing. Uh, we have company-wide meetings just to be like, guys, uh, Reddit stories got a million views. And it's just like, cool. cool. So people probably thought like, ah, you know, whatever. Um, but it was very funny. Uh, and it made me think back on when I last saw Anthony on like a Smosh production and we were on a location set, like at a house filming. Mm. And uh, this was like the week of, or like, yeah, this was like the week of like a breakup. Yeah, you were going through and it. And I, I like was not sleeping. Like I was, you, I, you I, I had gotten, I, I was going through a breakup, like a relationship breakup that week. Oh. And so I was, I was a mess. And um, I'm leaving set one day and I just am like, you know, I, you know how the zone you're probably in. I'm just beelining it to my car. I, I walk off of this set, out of this house. And at the same time, I think Anthony rapped. And so I, I'm like a good 50 feet away, heading towards my car. And I just hear, uh, hey, I'll, I'll, see you, I'll see you later, man. And I look back and it's Anthony. Like, oh. <laughs> it was really sad. And I was just, I, I was so out of it that I was just like, all right, dude. Like, I was just like, see, see ya. And then that was the last time I saw him. And here. he was not lying. And and like and it was just and then I remember Aww. I remember getting it. You know when you have those moments where you know it's a big deal, but you're not in the zone for it, and you get in your car and I get in my car and I go, that was a huge moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that was a huge moment, and I was so out of it. Whatever. Uh, and and like I've seen him a yeah, lot. Yeah. That's the thing. I have seen Anthony almost every year since like I'll see him at like a a VidCon uh last year I did this uh, Courtney and I did this big hide and seek thing uh yeah. on Preston's mm -hmm. channel and Anthony was there and and like Anthony in all these years has always been so nice like he's and it's it's like no time passes and we see him and he's like hey how's it going man oh what's up and like we don't really talk about work like we just mm -hmm. were like oh but um so him coming back wasn't like oh I haven't seen you in six years mm -hmm. But it was trippy to see him in a mm -hmm. Smosh context. Yeah, um, in the coming into the Smosh studio, like that was just trippy to perceive. And him and Ian next to each other in a building like that, like no one in the public eye has seen that in I know. in literally over like six years. Um, I I feel like y you were talking about your goodbye with Anthony, but I feel like. That is such like an indie movie moment. It was. Like I feel like people want this big thing to happen when like it's a big moment, but that is just so not real. Mm -hmm. Like it's always gonna be like, see you later, man. See ya. See ya. And then the movie <laughs> ends and you never see each other or the Titanic <laughs> starts sinking. One last song, gentlemen. Remember the Titanic? Right. Like, that's the way life is. I that's the beauty. I have a super well actually, no. Uh, let me quickly say a, a wholesome thing about mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is you hear the quote of like you never know when it's gonna be the last time you see someone but I always think about whenever I say goodbye to someone of just like I think I'm never gonna see them again I'm probably gonna run into that person again and then it happens and mm -hmm. like how often does that happen and I always love thinking about that that it's typically never goodbye really oh yeah you'll be so certain you're never gonna see that person again even if it's a person you definitely don't want to see again. Yeah, that's why you don't burn bridges. Exactly. Don't burn bridges. Good thing you I was always see them because we live so long. We I live was, so long. I was never an asshole to Anthony, so it's not awkward. Um, okay, I don't believe just you. Just establishing that. <laughs> uh, I'm curious, Amanda. What are you know? Because in your funeral, you did impressions of like all the cast. Yeah. And you nailed it. You've just met Anthony because you haven't met him before, right? Um, no, I met him once before, like hanging out with Ian, but it was like okay, not, yeah. it was not like 
really, yeah, we met. But yeah. I wouldn't say that we like hung out. For sure. And I, I've never worked with him. For sure. Um, uh, do you have like first impressions of oh, like? Oh, absolutely. He was like, <laughs> boy on Christmas morning, giddy. Like he was just so smiley and, um, you know, just like, don't look at me. <laughs> Like I'm shy. Like I felt like he was like, I am. I'm here in the business, and I'm gonna. T- I'm gonna talk about the business. But I just bought this with my childhood friend. Like I feel like he was like a teen who was like so stoked to be there, and was like, mm, right, I am a businessman right yeah. now. Yeah. And he was just so sweet. He was literally like, he was just giddy. Mm-hmm. And my only impression of just the smiles and the the hair curl over one eye <laughs> that was just always like yeah. in the way that made him do this like dip with his head. And I just felt like he was just like so ready to just hang out. I mm. like see him when you're. Do you doing know what I mean? Yeah, it's no like he's just so. But then he's like, and yeah, it's gonna be a great. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do a good business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're gonna do a good business. Yeah, well, it's just like the curl. He's uh yeah, and he's got great fashion. That dude. He's uh, got the decked tattoos. Out, decked out in mm-hmm. rings, tattoos. Great, great rings. The tattoos are like a. Yellow Book Road, like, like a journey all up and down his arm. <laughs> I know. Um, it's pretty dope. It's pretty cool. He's yeah, a cool guy. Yeah, he's so, he's so sweet. And what's great is he's like the opposite of Ian. And I don't mean that. <laughs> he's a great God, why guy. why did I say that? Here's he's the thing, honestly is like, the nicest guy. The opposite of Ian. I No, I love Ian so much. Ian is like the older brother vibes. And and Anthony feels like the younger brother. Like Ian's like, let's go. We're in the car. We gotta go. And he's just like, okay, yeah, I'm coming. Like it's just like yeah. I just feel like they. That's the thing is people are like, oh, you know, Ian curmudgeon. And I was like, I don't. I see Ian as like so fun loving and sweet and goofy yeah, and like cares so deeply. But he has a different vibe than Anthony. Yeah. If oh, that makes for sure. Sense. Yeah. Ian. It's. I, I want to establish here. It's very much in a bit that we have played into. Ian, when you hang out with him, is a super chill. Like he is a positive guy. Like in a lot of ways, he just he makes a lot of dark jokes. <laughs> He's willing to joke about anything. Um, but uh, yeah, him and Anthony together, they do complement each other mm-hmm. so well. Mm-hmm. I That's mean, you thing. see why them together is like the first big YouTube star. Like. They and they're back doing what they did back then. It's so cool. It is. It is in fact the coolest YouTube story I think that's ever happened. Yes. Like truly. Yeah. I mean, in comparison to like the Shane Dawson saga, the Jenna Marble saga, other mm-hmm. people who were like pillars of YouTube's growth as a as a website, like Ian and Anthony were the first among that, and it felt like this really sad shattered end to a story that just didn't have any resolution for like at least the public eye. And now it's like, it's not even a resolution. It's like, it's coming back. It's continuing. The story isn't over yet. And I feel like it's like so many people are gonna be excited to see what's coming from it. The Friends reunion. That's what I'm like thinking in my head. I'm like, oh my God, for YouTubers, this is like their favorite show ever reunion. And like, how many comments daily do we get? Where's Anthony? Where's Anthony? Where's yeah. Anthony? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, oh my God, dad and dad are back together. They're back. I don't know it, if they're dad and dad. It's more like. It's 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 more like brothers. Like they bros are, are. Bros are back. The bros are back. The best friends are back. Um, and uh, so An- Anthony is in uh, several videos on Pit, and I think he'll be in some games videos as well. I don't know. I know he's such a busy guy, and he still has his own channel, and they're going to be working really hard on these sketches on uh, on the Smosh channel. Um, but I think he is trying to come in whenever he can to be on Pit and Games, so look forward to that. Um, but it, it gives off this vibe of, like, best friends who are, like, they rekindled that, mm-hmm. that magic, and it's, it's just so, so cool. It's just so cool to see. I'm just very, very happy for Ian, and I'm very happy for Anthony that they get to have that yeah. Like we've all had a childhood friend like and you all want to start projects with them and you just never know where it's going to go and yeah. they get to have that and like they have a lot of people who love them and I'm oh, just dude. excited yeah. to be a part of that. It's very cool. Um yeah, so you know, for those listening, like the main channel, uh you can go and you can become a member 
now um, to help try to support what they're doing because they want to they want to keep doing this thing for as long as they can. This and do thing it. being sketch comedy. Sketch comedy. Mm -hmm. well, like They want it to be old school classic smosh. Um, so you can go there and you can support. And I think there's a lot of bonus content um, depending on what tier you subscribe to or Ooh. become a member of. So check it out. It's really cool. Um, and, you know, we will try to get Anthony on here. I, I'm sure it will happen soon. Oh, that's uh, the Give plan. us time. But our plan is to eventually have every single person from Smosh here on this show. Uh, we'll be cycling through them all, uh, even your favorite crew members, whoever. Uh, no one's telling us what to do. Right. We, Ian was like, do it, go, have fun. <laughs> and we're like, okay. Okay, we're dad. Gonna, okay, dad. <laughs> Let's steal the car and get donuts, mommy. <laughs> car just flying <laughs> off the road, crashing. No. Um, so, uh, Look, we can keep talking. I I did also bring some stuff. Uh, Yay. Something I want to do on this show. As you know, I host uh, Reddit Stories, where we read a ton of Am I the Asshole? Today I F***ed Up, True Off My Chest, all these insane, unhinged things on Reddit. There are so many other subreddits, however, that we never cover, and there are, uh, there are other corners of the internet that I love and obsessed with, and uh, we never cover that stuff. So I want to bring that stuff here. Mm -hmm. Um and just have fun with it. Uh, yeah, just riff off of the things that we read and yeah. see what... Have a good time. Yeah. Um, so, starting off, a, a subreddit that I love is um, Ask Reddit. There's also Ask Men, Ask Women. They're all typically the same. But really? Uh, like, like the subreddits, <laughs> the same questions get floated around all of them. Yeah. And, uh, but the, the answers are what are fun. So you don't, don't feel pressured to answer these questions. You can if you want. Or I can be someone who might answer a certain way. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it could be whoever you want. Can we just talk about Courtney's yawn? Yeah. No. Okay. So Courtney just yawned. Um, I think I'm Courtney sorry. releases I was demons. It in. This is a really bad start to this. Um, Courtney this really just sucks. This demon. is how I feel about your podcast. Yeah. So far. That's really. That, the podcast really was so hurts. fun to be on. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> <Stop>. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's ready it up. She's ready. Okay. I'm ready. Um, here's the first question that I found. Has anyone made a deal with a friend that if they weren't married by a certain age, they would marry one another and actually followed through? How did it go? Um, Ooh. I, I'm not going to say <laughs> names. I know of someone that this actually happened to. <gasps> they married? Uh, they did not get married. Oh! But they, they in high school, they were like, oh, um, if we're not married by 30, what, what if we get married? And they kind of joked about it. It was kind of more of a joke. And then when he was 30, he was engaged. And then she was like, hey. oh, uh, hey, like, ha, 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 ha. And he was like, I'm engaged. She's like, oh, that's OK. Ah, <laughs> that's so fun for you guys. I'll get you a wedding gift. She shows up to his front door uh, with a wedding dress on. She's just like, hi, Jake, remember? Oh, that was God. crazy. I'm 30. You can get on one knee now. Okay. Motherfucker. Your breath smells like vodka. <laughs> what? Your, your breath smells like vodka. Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know where that came from. Holy crap. That was cool. That was awful. I went um, so deep. Uh, you guys, I'm guessing, never made any promises. Like I that. did. You uh, did? But it wasn't until we were 40. You, you, have, a, you oh, have a deal like that? She's beyond, wise beyond our years. Because but I was, was going to say 30 is young. 30 is very young. Okay, 40. 40 uh, with this friend from middle school and high school. Whoa. It was a lady. Oh, okay. I mean, people do that all the time. People get right. legally married and share property together, and it's like just a great old time. Hell yeah. So where is this lady? Um, She's actually engaged. Oh. oh. So you're the girl who showed up with a wedding dress and oh, vodka. That yeah. Sucks. I was like, hey, remember that <laughs> fortune teller we made That's... and signed and promised we'd get married? And... That's so awkward. And, and is, is it cool? And I'm... Uh, like our friendship? Yeah, are you guys cool? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> drama. I don't know. I oh. thought we were. Drama eh. time. Getting crazy here. Um, I kind of love that. Yeah, I never, I really didn't want to get married. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Really? I know I'm married. Yeah, but you're recently I married. I'm recently married, but I, I met H and I was like, oh, hell yeah, well, I want to get married to you. Aww. 
That's awesome. But like growing up, I was like, I don't give a fuck about getting married. I wasn't into that. I really wanted to like have a, like a like a gorgeous castle in Europe and like a beautiful ocean nearby. And I really wanted to be a. I remember I wrote in my journal, not a. I really didn't want to be a successful actor. I wanted to be a good actor. But I you wrote that when I was like seven. But you want to live in a castle yeah, with an ocean humble view. Humble means. Humble means. <laughs> yeah, Aww. I wanted to be a ninja cowboy. <laughs> you know, I wasn't thinking about marriage. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? Marriage wasn't my number one. Okay. But now that I met H, I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited to do this. That's cute. Yay. And we did it. He's um, your hell yeah. He's my hell yeah. There's some answers here to this. Uh, my friend and I made a deal that by 30, if we are not married or in any type of relationship, we would get married. This is when I was 18 and he was 21. Well, we ended up dating when I was 23 and we got married a few weeks ago. Whoa. He turned 30 this year. I think we kept our promise. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, someone else said, I made a deal with my best friend of seven years. We even wrote joke vows and speeches. This was like five years ago when I was 30 and he was 26. Well, uh -oh. uh, in quotations, well, here we are, 35 and unmarried. I couldn't find anyone better, so I guess we're doing this thing. Uh, they responded, you're pretty cool. I like hanging out with you. This might as well happen. I turned 35 in April. We are getting married next year. <gasps> I shit you not. So Whoa. some people really follow up on that shit. But they didn't sound that excited. Yeah, they I'm were sorry. just like, like well, it's a joke. Well, shit you not. It's happening. Get in here, little lady. Yes, <laughs> the old ball and chain's <laughs> getting locked on. Yeah, exactly. There was a, wasn't there like a, a viral video recently of like a some wedding vows where the woman was like, now I know he'd rather be with his friends drinking some Bud Lights and he's there like with a cap on at the Ew. stand just like <laughs> laughing and just like, I'm like, God, some people are fine with that type of vibe. Yeah, they're fine with, you know, being called like, my old lady wants me home. I'm like, bitch, do not. <laughs> do not call me an old lady. Um, Actually, let me scroll down. I found another wedding question that ties into this uh, mm. really well. Um, okay, here it is, dude. It's the best. I was thinking about it, too. When I saw it, since you just recently got married, yeah. uh, wedding photographers of Reddit what was your they're not gonna last long moment? Ooh, this is such a good question. Dude, so good. And I, it's it's when it hits me that some jobs, I'm like, you don't think about that job being so interesting. Yeah. But a wedding photographer is probably- that's so intimate. That's, that's one of the most fascinating jobs on the planet. So many awesome characters that you see. I mean, I got my best friend to do it. That's uh, my, great. my best friend filmed it and took photos because I just couldn't imagine hiring someone that I didn't know taking like, okay, now hold her hand and turn to the left and laugh. It's like, uh, you're like a robot looking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but I get, I get that people really want like very like professionals. Sure. Like it's hard to have a best friend. Luckily I just, he was incredible. And he's good at what he does. Like, yeah. I feel like us were like, we're all entertainers and stuff. We all know people who are really good at photography. Yeah. And I guess if you know someone who's good at photography. Exactly. If you don't, I totally get hiring that. But I'm so, in they see everything. They see everything. Do. Oh, and they see into your soul too. Because oh. they've been doing it. So they know. Um, I can't wait to hear these. Uh, yeah. Someone said, when the groom told the bride she couldn't have cake because she was overweight. Lasted a year, he gained weight. Huh? Um, are you? I can't fathom that. Out of your mind? <laughs> I cannot fathom that. It's like, it's your wedding day. I love when people are like, I can't wait for you to have kids, but please don't get fat. It's like, how do you think I have children, honey? <laughs> how do you think it works? Uh, someone said, when the groom looked at her like she was the love of his life and she treated the day like her prom and ignored him. I think they lasted six months. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, yeah. do women ignore their prom date? I th <laughs> that was on okay, my prom Okay, date. to be fair, I went to a... I went to two homecomings when I was a freshman. Whoa. Okay, hottie. Uh, I was not going to a regular high school, so I had I had a friend. I had friends who went to both the different high schools in the area, um, and uh, no, it was both platonic. It was just like sure. friends. But uh, there was there's like the rich high school, and then there was kind of the high school that's like not not the rich. High Wendy's school. parking lot. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so the rich high school had it at this crazy convention center type of thing, like mm. really fancy thing. Um, so I got invited by this by this girl. I said yes, and uh, we go. And right at the start, she's gone, and I was just kind of by myself there. Luckily, I knew other people there, 
But I was like, she's gone, and I don't know where she went. And then at the end of the night, I see her again, and she's like dancing with other people. And I'm just like, okay. Like, I wasn't mad because I'm like, we're not dating or anything. It's it's not like, but it is still weird that you invited me and then didn't want to hang out. <laughs> I was also awkward as hell. Aww. But still, you were her date. Like, what? Um, but the other one was fantastic. It's the like other, the Bowling Dynamite. The other one was so much fun. <laughs> The other, one, the other one was just in a gymnasium, and that was a blast. Like, yeah. we were just dancing, having a great time. Um, but that was also with one of my, like, best friends. Like, she's still one of the coolest people I've ever known. I haven't talked to her in a long time, but one of those people that you could just hit up and just be like, hey, how's it going? And they'd be like, oh, dude, what's up? Like You were awkward as hell? Oh, dude, I was so... I'm still awkward. This is you awkward? I'm still awkward. But I was really awkward as a teenager. No, <laughs> I was. I was genuinely... So awkward. We'll eventually have, we should eventually get my friend uh, Shelby on, yes. who's known me since I was 14, and she can tell you genuinely that I was a very awkward teenager. Oh. Um, you know what I You know what I was thinking about recently, because my best friend just moved here? I've decided that I, that the awkwardness that we felt like when we were teens, I feel like we lose that when we're adults, because we try to be like, we know everything, we're right. So the other day we were dying laughing because I was like, I think I'm a loser. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like L on forehead loser. Like not a loser that's like, oh, you're a loser. You have no life. Like, fu- like the loser that like, f- like freaks and geeks. Like the loser that you like, like they're cool, but they're also a loser. Sure. I was like. <laughs> I am a loser. She's like, I've known you since kindergarten. You've always been a loser. <laughs> That's so funny. And I'm like, I want, I've decided that if I'm going to be a loser, I'm going to keep embracing being a f-ing loser. So when you say awkward as hell, I'm like, oh my God, you were probably the best. Aww. I was, Do you know what I'm people, saying? People didn't dislike me. I was just <laughs> awkward. Like, I just hated that I wasn't, I, but I also subscribed to just the worst media that pushes like, oh, the James Bond type of cool aesthetic. And I, I was like, I'm not cool. Like, I'm not, I, I just I just felt like. Mm. Shane smoking cigarettes at like 14. He's like, hello, little lady. Want to go back I, to my I, room? And everyone's like, go away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, being a guy when you're 14. And also this is pre like deep internet that we have now where you really can find the you info. You apps. Yeah, pre-apps, man. Like, trying to find the info back then was tough. And I want to go into that more on these episodes and talk about that and my history with the internet. Because Googling things in 2005 oh or 6, gosh, yeah. it's devastating. You would yeah. find nothing good. You'd, you'd, have to, you'd be looking through forums trying to get advice. You don't know who these guys are. Yeah. And it's, looking back, it's the worst advice on the planet. And it makes sense why so many dudes end up doing the cringiest, stupidest, most uncomfortable things is because they were probably told somewhere like, do that, it'll work. Like, Did you ever Google how to be cool? Yes. uh, yes. I did. a million times. Uh, Did you ever Google how to flirt? Oh, yes. Yes. Well, not me. But they never had, they never had how to flirt for girls. I just, I have a vivid memory of like a video, might've been on eBombs World or early YouTube or whatever, it was how to flirt. And this guy was like, this is what you do. You walk up to a woman. If she has blue eyes, you go, your eyes, they're like blueberries. I want to, like, eat it. I want to eat that little blueberry. <laughs> and that's, like, just <laughs> oh my God, forever. Brie, that is you. That's Shame. actually just you. Your eyes are like blueberries. Yeah. I want to, like, eat it. Oh, my like, God. <laughs> stop grabbing my eyes. Are my eyes, like, poop because they're brown? Oh. Your eyes are, like, your eyes are like coffee shits. beans. I want to grind it up and drink it in the morning. <laughs> I actually love that. That's really, really cute. Wow. No, it wouldn't have worked on me. Are you sure about that? Your eyes are like, wow, your eyes are green, like little four-leaf clovers. I want to, like, make a wish. I want to be a lucky (laughs) chair. Yeah. Oh, your eyes are green. Just like in Ireland, out on the field, (laughs) with my sheep. Got to go out and get them and wrangle them back to the... To the the, the, the back to the farm. Mary's here. She's (laughs) sheep in the ship. What? Don't <laughs> hit Kevin say. Shut up and Kevin say. Just come inside, like, like I've got some beef stew cooking. Boat. 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 Oh, okay, hold on. Really quick. Sidebar. 
Do you remember this? Amanda has a character that she pitched, or she just started joking about. No, you told me about this. I never knew about this. That I was this like, happened. I was like, remember, Amanda has a character that. What if your manager was an old Irish woman? And that's the character. And it's like we're at VidCon, and imagine this woman is managing you and trying to help you. Both, both. Yes. <laughs> so it's like okay. Um, uh, guys, uh, the meet and greet is happening uh, in 20 minutes, so you'll need to head on down there. But imagine you have a bit of a stomach ache, so your manager is like, uh, <laughs> just like, but you can go down to the back and you can wait it out and you can go to sleep, but come out here and talk to your people. But be kind. But be good. <laughs> if I could have a manager that spoke to me like that and like, I don't know, fed me like pork. Links and like put me to bed. My sister's husband's from Ireland. She's like, man, I love Ireland because every time we go there, she just puts me to bed and feeds me pork. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yes, sweet angel. I bet you're so tired from your travels. Go to bed and come back and you wake up and we'll have tea and food and we'll get really drunk at night. <laughs> like it sounds fake, but it's real. That's what they're really like. That's, That's all of them. Uh, they're <laughs> all kidding. really like that. Um, uh, holy shit. Okay. Um, where were we? Anyways, uh, yeah, ignoring your oh. prom date. Yeah. 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 And ignore yeah. and weddings going wrong, right? Or the really photographers. Being able Back to, to tell, yeah. some horrible weddings. Um, someone said, uh, when I worked as a wedding planner for a hotel chain, the groom had found out his bride was having an affair with her brother's best mate. Oh. The bride's mother knew about it, but insisted on the wedding and paid a fortune. The groom wasn't drinking much, and at the speeches, stood up and revealed he knew and said he was getting an annulment. He then took his best man on his honeymoon. The honeymoon oh. the bride's parents had paid for. <gasps> Good Pretty for epic. Him. Pretty epic. Bro trip. That, Bro trip. And they promised that if that ever happened, that they would do that. The him and the best friend. Yeah. They said if we ever get married and it, it gets an annulment, <laughs> we're gonna take, go on the honeymoon together. Promise. <laughs> when they were twelve exactly. years old. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If dude, you're so gonna get cheated on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, we gotta make sure it happens. And then when he found out, he probably told his best friend. He's like, dude, 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 dude. <laughs> She's cheating on me. It's like yeah. yes. Yeah. Bro trip. And that is another reason why it's so unsafe for the mothers. To fucking get so involved where they take control of your wedding. Oh. She could have saved a fortune if she just listened. That's another yeah. thing about wedding. You got to do what you want to do. Yep. Someone else said, at the rehearsal dinner, every toast to the bride was some euphemistic variation of, I'm so glad you finally found someone to put up with your bullshit. <laughs> they barely made it to the six-month mark. Oh, what? That's insane. I can't understand people who make like really like Cutting. yeah Pointed. mean uh wedding speeches i hear about it happening yeah. all the time and like or people who get way too drunk for their wedding speeches i'm like dude come on it's such a like Ugh. specific thing we did a sketch forever ago where i did we did impressions you did the guy version i did the woman version where it's mm. just like i'm so happy for you uh -huh. and like uh -huh. Like my my guys my my person's out there and I know that <laughs> oh. I'm happy for you I'm I'm so you guys deserve each other so much oh, like just, just like the, the heartbreak one yeah. just scarcity like I just feel like they're just so like yeah the speeches that are all about them they're just like I'm so happy for you guys like you guys did it you guys did it <laughs> and I just feel like you did it. My sister was a little bit like that at my wedding. She was like, but she was a little, she was, she was mad that my dad gave a speech because she, <laughs> she was very drunk. Um, my dad popped up, he, my dad popped up and was like, these two, these two. And my sister dropped her glass of wine and it went <laughs> during my dad's speech. And it was like so lovely. And she was like, at least he gives you a speech. He barely gave me a speech. <laughs> So I, there's just like so much, like Holy I don't even shit. know, like jealousy wow. around. Oh yeah, that was the only moment that got a little like feisty. Other than that, it was all love. Is I, I can imagine your family being yeah feisty like that. Yeah, my, that's awesome. Luckily, my family, they're very like we all have enough social anxiety that we want to put on a great speech, <laughs> and we're just gonna. It's gonna be very someday when it happens. It's gonna be very formal and just very like, well. So happy for Shane. He did it. Um, and my brothers, my oldest brother, he you can see a lot of my characters in him in that he's just this like, he's this like, 
he didn't he was never part of a fraternity, but he's got like a frat energy. Mm. And he is a teacher now. But he's just he'll be like, Well, dude. You freaking did it, dude. That's that's awesome. Couldn't be more happy for you. Awesome, man. You're oh. sick. Sick as hell. All right. Peace. Oh. Um, so it'll be nice. I okay. kind of love that. Um, someone said, said this before, third wedding and the best man, the groom's brother, starts his speech. Well, welcome back, everyone. Good to see some new faces and some old ones. Oh, <laughs> my Wait, what does God. That mean? It was like not a first marriage. It just did not, did not do well. Not doing well. Dude, why? Um, so why? Someone said, asked the groom in a recorded interview why he asked her to marry him. And he said, the pressure to get married. They lasted less than two months, hadn't even finished the video, and they were over. <laughs> oh, Wait, God. They, they had, he hadn't finished Before editing. finished editing the wedding video? It was over. Which is probably better that it ends then oh. and not. Um, okay, I found... I found this it's one's easier to get divorced at that point, right? But yeah. I, but I'm just like, what? Don't you guys see the signs? No. Also, I fully believe in pre-marriage counseling. We did oh, a year sure. of pre-marriage counseling, oh, and it was amazing. And and it was like, oh great, we're on the same page about everything. But imagine if it was like you did it, and you were like, oh, you're pressured to get married to me. Like that's when you find all that shit out. Don't get married. Interesting. Yeah, some people truly just don't see anything. They don't. They just yeah. don't. They're, they don't see a damn thing. Mm -hmm. um, this is the craziest one. Oh god. Went to a wedding during college to my friends that got married who graduated two years prior to me. They had a beautiful wedding on a boat off the Keys, and as the best man gave his speech, he was really drunk by this point. Just shouted. You don't deserve her. You literally got a blowjob from a stripper. No, make that two strippers at your bachelor party. Peace out. He dropped the mic and tried to do a dramatic exit, but by this point, we were all stuck on this boat in the middle of the ocean. It took an hour to get back to port, and it was the most awful and awkward hour of our lives for everyone on that boat. Oh. Bro. What? <laughs> he had to have been like, peace out. <laughs> oh shit! Just jump off. <laughs> Just jump, jump off the off. boat. A shark immediately eats yeah. it. Just... Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. I'm gonna use the bathroom. Where's the bathroom, Captain? Um, it's down on the bottom God. of the boat. I don't he just know. walks over to the side of the boat, pulls down his pants, and shits off the side. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, might as well. Wait, that's Who so cares? insane. Also, like, so embarrassed. Like he maybe he thought that he was doing her a favor, but he yeah. wasn't. Like who who was that for? Was that for the girl, for the for the bride, was that for him? Yeah. No. I, I think it was for him. If himself. you are if you are the bride of the groom and you find out and you want to do a public thing, that's one thing. If you find out one of them's cheating on the other, just go tell them directly and let them do their public. Maybe yeah. he wanted to be with her. That's Ooh, what I'm thinking. He that's did say you don't, don't deserve, deserve her. her. He wanted to be with her, her, and now maybe they're going to be together after he got eaten by a shark. <laughs> Wait, I loved him. She jumps in. The shark's like, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> I love the shark. <laughs> We're here for the shark. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> um, okay. I, uh, I have a bunch of other Ask Reddit things here. I love it. And, more, uh, more, more. They are insane. Um, okay. Okay, this one's nuts. This is getting weird now. Love it. It wasn't weird before. What is the biggest secret you've ever kept from your family? The first one is, and mind you, this is an anonymous post. We can't fact check this stuff. Okay. So, my brother and I saw aliens as a kid, and we were super intrigued by the flamethrowers. Uh, in fear of idiotic uh, aliens, like the movie Aliens. Yeah, the flamethrowers. Oh! I, I, sorry. Oh! I forgot about this one. When I first read it again, I was like, oh, they saw aliens. No, they saw the movie Aliens. Mm -hmm. uh, so my brother and I saw the movie Aliens as a kid, and we were super intrigued by the flamethrowers. In a feat of idiotic 13-year-old brilliance, we determined that a super soaker filled with, the, with Aquanet with a butane lighter strapped to the front might actually work the same. To our utter shock, it did. Shot 20-foot streams of sticky flame. We were just overjoyed until said sticky flame hit the side of the house and caught it on fire. Oh, shit. So we race over in between my shirt and the ho uh, hose, get it out. Uh, but there's a large dark spot on the side of the house. So we disassemble and clean out the flamethrower and, and mums the word. 
Uh, 30 years later, we were eating dinner over at the folks, and Dad remarks they've painted the house and finally got rid of that weird dark spot. Much stealthy chortling ensued. Honestly, how do kids survive childhood? We're all idiots. Um, <laughs> they didn't tell them? They never Like 30 never years later? Them. Never told them. They created flamethrowers as children. That's insane. That worries me about like possibly having children, because I love Alien, but kids... Say the darnest things. No. <laughs> I like how it's like, dude, I, I love Alien, but I don't know. But it's I don't like, know about kids. <laughs> why? But like you forget that kids see shit and go, mm, I can do that. Yeah. Flamethrower guns? Yeah. Oh, my God. Got to be careful what you show your kids. <laughs> I also would have told my parents. I would have been like, hey, guys, <laughs> hilarious. Um, That black spot was us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's 30 years later. That Boy Meets World episode where they make a flamethrower. And it's like this whole like learning lesson of like, don't make flamethrowers. Uh-huh. Uh, here, here's one. Redditors, have you ever gotten an ick from a potential partner or love interest that instantly killed your attraction to them? If so, what happened? Mm. Um, with most of these yeah. subreddits, a lot of the answers are really a bummer, but I pick like, I, I search for like the funniest ones or the like not as insane ones. Um, talking about our interests and after I listened to him blab about his lawnscaping business, I went to talk about my interests and he interrupted me to say, wow, you really have nothing interesting to say, do you? Oh, that's an ick. That's just a d That's just an awful person. Yeah, you forgot the D. Yeah, that's a guy's um, just a f***ing d um, <sighs> The amount of time he spent plotting revenge, usually against his parents or ex-wife, should have been spent introspectively uh, and on getting his life back on track. We broke up shortly thereafter. Then we tried to recon reconcile. Then he smoked meth in front of me. And that was the end of that. <laughs> I don't know which one was the ick. The ick like, was not the meth. No, the meth is fine. Uh, it's his desire to get revenge. Um, oh, oh, this one's fascinating. Had a guy once whose car smelled so bad, I had to try to not throw up while sticking my head out the window. Oh, my God. He couldn't smell it. I thought <gasps> I was going to die. Turns out he forgot about a double cheeseburger in the back of his car for over two weeks in the hot sun. Mm -mm, no. I don't know what bothered me more, the smell or the fact that it didn't bother him. Uh, it reminds me of back at uh, when we were filming out of Mythical Studios. Yep. They did a video once where they put a car out in the back. They filled it with food. Fish, burgers, cheese. All sorts of stuff. And then let it sit out there for a month. Why? Just to see what it would smell like. Just to see what would Whose happen. Whose car was it? it? It was an old, it they was like a- a junker, like fully rust. Uh, yeah, fully junker car. But uh, it was a nightmare to just even be around it. It was crazy. So who got in there and smelled it? I don't know. I'm actually. pretty sure they got into like hazmat suits to open it up. Um, but I don't remember. It's a video. Yeah. Great. Um, um, yeah, I don't, that stuff makes me like so ill. Yeah. Like, I don't like, it, 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 it's very freaky when people cannot smell their own stench. Oh, it's a yeah. It's red flag for me. Well, if it's, if it's BO, if it's BO, oh, that's Not BO, I'm talking like, 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 like if I there's like a that smell, stink. if there's a smell going on and they don't smell Maybe it's it. not their own stench on their body, but like the stench that they live in. Yeah, I, mm. and look, I don't have a great sense of smell. But you don't? I don't. I don't have a great sense of smell. I have an extremely keen sense of smell, so that's stuff really Same. No, I, I, Do you like plainer foods? No. No, oh. I like spice. I like spices. I do smell. In fact, I think I like intense smells because you're like, ooh, I can smell. Yeah, <laughs> um, like a fear of mine is always putting cologne on too strong, so I probably underplay it. But I'm I, so I, glad we're bringing this up right now. Yeah, because you're. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that Your cologne awful. actually smells really good. Thank I you. I think I've complimented you. Yeah, maybe. In my journal. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> no, you're a cologne, but you know when you smell. I think I think the only time I've ever smelled really intense cologne is older women. Oh, dude, it can happen sometimes. Sometimes men. Yeah. Sometimes men can really have that Irish spring smell. Oh. They walk past and they're like, "I smell real good." Like. Well, can I tell you a little secret that my grandmother, her favorite thing to do, this is real, right, is put Irish spring soap bars underneath your sheets. So that when you'd go to bed, she'd have a big house and we'd all sleep there. You go to bed, you pull up the sheets and it smelled like Irish spring. Oh. And I started doing it. I put it in my drawers 
my drawers. So I have Irish Spring in my underwear drawer and my jean drawer. So if I smell like Irish Spring, that's why this is in my closet. Wow. <laughs> and H is like, I feel like you're going to get sick from that. Isn't that like crazy? F- no. No, you're like no. Julian Salamita's dogs. No. They like roll around on bars of Irish Spring soap oh, because they're great. so obsessed with the smell. Guys, try putting soap underneath your sheets. It's actually, you open up your sheets and you're like... Where do you uh, put the soap? Do you put it like where your feet go? You like, put it just like in the middle and then when you open up the sheet, you can take out the soap and then put it back. And it's specifically Irish Spring. Yeah, well, just Irish for me. Is the soap. All yeah. right. That's if anyone does this, do. um, comment down below uh, <laughs> either on this episode or next week's episode and let us know how it went. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let us know how your Irish Spring life is going. Yeah. Um, you guys ever s- had any icks? Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, you, you start talking like this though. You start talking real funny like... When you have that Irish spring in every single drawer, (laughs) under your sheets. And you're being f***ing nice. You're being f***ing nice now. You're f***ing nice. You're f***ing nice. I don't know. I mean, these icks are like obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you have any unobvious icks? (sighs) I guess is the question. I feel like, I I, I don't know. I, I... Maybe in my dating experience, it's just not as obvious. I feel like a lot of dudes have just a lot of obvious things that they probably do that women are just immediately like, no. Mm. Yeah. No. Uh, I haven't had experience with going on a date with, with someone where they did some small thing and I was like, it's a deal breaker. Um, you haven't? I haven't. It would have to be something like, but it'd have to be something pretty bad. Like, I'm trying to think like, like. Bad breath. Not tipping or, yeah. But even bad oh, breath, yeah. I'd be like, maybe they, maybe it's today. You know, yeah, maybe, or maybe you need to get your tonsils maybe out. I'm getting, maybe you need to, maybe you're, you need to change your insides. Um, we've got a ton more Reddit stuff, but we'll cover that. We'll keep yeah. covering this type of stuff on this show. We'll always go back to that. But uh, I also want to talk about like we love making characters, we love making comedy, all that stuff. Um, and there was a specific character, Courtney, that you do that this kind of segues into because I'm curious how many icks he presents. Um, hmm. But you do a character named Dominic Patron, who I feel like is. A very toxic dude, I think. Is he toxic? The thing is, he's toxic, but you still like like him. Yeah, which makes him toxic. But you've done him a bunch over the years, and where did you come up with him? He's my favorite. Um, I found him when we had to do the Logan Paul versus Jake Paul boxing video, where we found this really great blonde wig, and I didn't know how to act like Jake Paul, so I just started acting like a dude. And then I really loved that wig. I was like, this is a nice wig. I want to bring this back. And then we did America's Next Top Simp. And that's where Dominic came to fruition. And I love him because I love how he's just the worst guy. But you love him. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, he sucks. He does all the weird, shitty things. But you're like, but I want to keep you around for some reason, you know? Yeah. No, he's a great dude. I love him because... I, cause I interacted with him as Amanda. So <laughs> I love him because I'm just like, oh my God, you're the f- worst. But he doesn't leave and he doesn't shy away and he doesn't get like, he's not like, ah, oh, whatever, f- you. He stays. He's like, I'm committed to whatever this is. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I can appreciate that bravery. So I'm into that. Yeah. I want to create, I, I have my Bryce Chrysan character that I haven't done in forever. Oh that. yeah, Bryce and Dominic together could be a I, fun duo. But I don't I never figured out what he was. I have a hard time playing like shitty guys. All my characters are kind of good intentioned. All my characters are good. <laughs> All my characters are good. But like There's your character right I there, Shane. Really Shane's. like <laughs> Uh, I really want to work on like and I want to start posting on social like a grind set guy. Like the motive like like here's here's how you change your life. You need to wake up at 4 a.m., take a cold shower. And you need to reevaluate. You need to look at your assets. You need to double your value as a high value male. Like, I wanna, <laughs> yeah. I, cause I get served that shit so much. I don't know what your Instagram and Do you TikTok get that guy feeds. on YouTube? Which guy? That guy on YouTube who's like, his thing is called like Extreme or something. And he's literally like hanging on a rope, shirtless, over a pool. And he's like, hey, whoever said push ups helps you lose weight, they don't. Join my butt. Bo- have you seen it? Oh my God, I've seen no, ads of that guy who's like, shit. stop trying to work out to lose weight. It doesn't That's work. That's him. That's like, him. So Is he dangerous. always shirtless? Like, yeah. Okay. Um, Is that a grind set type of guy? That's a grind set. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I get served it so much, I disagree with it. 
I, I don't like it. But I get served it so much and it seeps into my brain and I find myself at times feeling that and going, damn, I need to work harder. I need to, what, am I thinking about my finances? Am I, am I, what am I doing? I need to start a company. Like, I shit you not, it seeps oh in. Oh my gosh. But I want to create a character yes. so that I can kind of defang it. So I'm going to yeah. be working on that. I want to, I'll bring that on this show at some point. Yeah. That's the best part about creating a character is because when we create a character, it's us processing things that make us feel something. Yeah. I feel like we're like, oh my God, that woman made me feel so weird. Let me put that on. And yeah. putting it on helps you like process through how that person makes you I feel like so you can like understand them. Yeah. I feel like you should just do all the things that make you insecure about that guy and just like go even harder in that. That's so true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Dominic would listen to those podcasts, but he would put them on and he physically like could not pay attention. Like he, that's <laughs> that's how he is. So he's like, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do. This is exactly how I want to run my life. Plays it and then he just, his ADHD. He's just like, I'm, I'm going to go drink a soda. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I love about him. He he means he's well and he wants to be there, but he's got other things going on. Yeah. He has all the best intentions, I think. For himself. Well, there's women out there that are grind set type of women, but not in working out. They're like in um, taking care of your skin, right? Oh. Like taking care of your skin routine. It's like, okay, hello, my little baby babies. Like, Have you ever tried blending your chia yeah. seeds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also like health food things. It's like, okay, super simp. Like I'm just going to do this thing. And their bodies are just like ripped. And they're just like in their kitchen, like ripped. Their asses are like bouncing off like <laughs> They like hit their ass on the counter. The counter's like moves just a little bit. And they're like, the counter's oh. like, I'll oh, get out of the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, ma'am. And they're just like, okay, my baby is super simp fun snack. I'm like, I'd rather be dead than eat that. Like, why are, what are we doing here? Yeah. And it's true. You go on your Instagram, especially with wedding stuff, the amount of wedding stuff that was like the best wedding trend ever. And I'm like, that woman is cutting her cake with a sword. And there are fireworks <laughs> behind her. And they're in a castle in Italy. Don't fucking tell me about having a wedding that you want. Okay, bitch? Like, uh, <laughs> that's so funny, the switch up between them, because I, I, I do sometimes come across them on TikTok where it's like, here's how I spent my day doing this. And it's like, but then when I get the like manosphere stuff that gets served to me, it's so, it's like <sighs> yeah. liquid metal, like <laughs> trying to be pumped into your body of like, what did you do with your day to day? Like, what are you doing? There was one that got served where it's just like, it's this guy, they're always on a podcast. It always looks like this. And they're just like, it's like, Here's how my productivity is going to be double what you, you're doing. I break my day up into two. Every day for me is two days. 6 a.m., I wake up. 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., I'm working. That's a six-hour work day. Then 12 p.m., my next day starts. 12 p.m. to 6, 6 p.m., I'm working. Uh, two days, that's twice the productivity. One month, like you're toast. Six months down the line, I've, I've blown past where you're ever going to go in life. And it's like, what are you talking about, man? You're saying you work 12 hours a day, which you don't. They never ever say what they're doing with their time. No, it's always a lie. Like, even even the TikToks where it's like, here's what I do on my typical day, and they, like, do, like, 30 things, and, like, end up by, and by that point, it's 8 a.m., and I now get to, like, they act like they do so much more than they're actually doing in a day. Also, mm -hmm. you can't wake up at 6 a.m. and immediately start working. You have to, like, brush your teeth Ex and shit. Exactly. Do you know what they're actually doing? They're editing that stupid video. <laughs> <laughs> they're That's sitting on the working. toilet, they're taking a huge shit, they're feeling <laughs> shitty, and they're editing that goddamn video. Okay? They're not doing any of it. And it probably feels really good to do that. Yeah, to take a shit. It's really awesome. <laughs> you're like, oh, you're editing yeah. editing something that makes you look really cool. Like, I think a lot of those creators, even when they're saying this is the best wedding or this is my morning routine, I do all the, the best things. No, they've done that one day for that video or or they not exactly. even they probably don't even believe that that was the best wedding idea. They just want to be perceived as like the best at what they're doing. Yeah, and the yeah. next day they're just watching that video 60 million times to be like, God, I should have chosen a different song. And it's okay. Everybody <laughs> wants to be like the best at what they're doing, you know? Um, but don't make other people feel bad. Live and yeah. let live, baby. Live exactly. And let live. Um, well, I'm going to work on a character like that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it to like Try Not To Laugh or something. But I'm going to do it here first. Please. This is going to be the zone. Before we go, I just want to establish really quick that this is going to be the place that if you watch this, you're going to see stuff here. And then we're going to bring it 
to uh, the Smosh Pit and Smosh Games mm-hmm. channel. Mm-hmm. And then, so if you see it there, you can be like, um, I saw this first. I saw it here where and they made see, it. You can see exactly how we like create it and brainstorm it. And it's like, you can't really sit down and write a character on a computer. You have to like be in movement, change, mm-hmm. chat, like talk about your mm-hmm. stories. Bowel movement, shit. Yeah, on the yeah. sit while on the toilet. Editing. Take huge shit. Take a huge shit. Well, can I just ask, if you were to come up with a few names for this dude. Yeah. Because I really think that names really help color a character. Mm-hmm. If you were to think of like three names, and maybe I'll join in, maybe Blaine. I was thinking Dane. Dane was the- Mind melt. Dane. Wow. Okay, Courtney, thoughts, name? Train. <laughs> He, he rides he he rides trains. I really train. I train every day. He trains every day. Train. Blaine, train Dane, Blaine. or Darkus. Darkus? No. Nope, nope, nope. F*** that. Also, we're allowed to throw things at the wall and then just x them, right? What about his name? What if his name is Break? Break is Break. A break. But like spelled like B-R-A-K-E. Yeah. Like Blake. Like break. pump yeah, but it's the break. break. Breaks. Break Davidson. I'm break, I'm break, which is ironic because I never stop. Yes, the the name to me has to have a feeling like it's like yeah. a ah like a like you stopped against a wall and hit it right <laughs> like that's to yeah. me that's what I think about with names right like break break all right okay I'm gonna work on break yeah um, work on break I think we have to I think we have to we have to go. end this we dude physically have to I stop uh, right I want to keep talking um Courtney thank you for being our first guest Courtney yes. we're so grateful and lucky to have you. Thanks, I set the bar real high. You set, you said it so you set high. the bar, bar very high. You set it very high, Courtney. Uh, you set the bar so no high. No one else is going to be able to come on this Nobody show. Else. Nobody else. Sarah, nice. You're so fucking nice. <laughs> um, well, thank you for being here. Amanda, thank you. Thank you, Shane. And, uh, d- and, and we have a final question for you before we leave. Yes. For yeah. Me? Yeah. Okay, we have a question for you. Uh, Amanda, take it away. Who is your favorite Smoshcast host? Hmm. Oh shit. You know, technically I hosted the old Smashcast sometimes, so I'm gonna say me. Incorrect. incorrect. That is incorrect. Thank you, Thank you so, so much for watching. <laughs> she lets go of her hands immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Uh bye. Every Monday. Bye. See you, see you later.